It was only possible to see this in a sci-fi movie seen before. But six years ago, SpaceX made history when the Falcon 9 booster landed on a drone ship for the first time. Now, everything will be even more incredible because SpaceX is attempting to land their enormous, super heavy booster the same way. Wondering how and when? Let's find out. Welcome back to our channel, guys. In today's video, we will be talking about how Elon Musk revealed SpaceX's Starship Marine Recovery. If reports are to be believed, then the Super Heavy, which is 70 meters, 230 feet long, will be loaded with 3,400 tons, 6.8 million pounds, of cryogenic, chilled methyl ox. It should be able to produce more than 70 meganewtons, or 16 million pounds, of maximum thrust, thanks to around 32 Raptor engines. It is expected to launch a payload weighing at least 100 tons, and maybe up to 150 tons, into low Earth orbit. The enormous Saturn V rocket that was used for the Apollo moon mission in the 1960s and 1970s will be outclassed by Super Heavy as a result of this. The integrated Starship system will start to tip over toward the intended orbit as it rises from the launch pad, while the Super Heavy would turn around as it returns to Earth after the upper stage separates in outer orbit. The massive booster is to lower steel grid fins which resemble potato waffles from its sides as it descends. These will aid in guiding the rocket stage back to the launch pad. The aim of SpaceX is to use its launch tower to capture the tumbling rocket. While the spaceship and rocket are on the launch pad, the tower gives engineers and crew members easy access to them. The launch tower will project a pair of steel arms. The weight of the grid fins will subsequently be supported by the booster as it lands on these arms. In order to control its descent, the vehicle has four steel landing flaps that are located close to the front and back of the vehicle, just like how a skydiver controls their freefall by using their arms and legs. But to achieve this, Starship should be slow enough to do an engine burn that flips the vehicle into a vertical orientation as it reaches the ground. It needs to guide the vehicle down to a secure touchdown by using the Raptors as retro rockets. And guess what? This broad strategy, according to Musk, could be used to safely land Starship on any planetary surface in the solar system. In the future, though, it's possible that Starships returning to Earth won't need to do the flip maneuver. The launch tower's steel arm, just like the Super Heavy rocket, could instead grasp the ships as they approached the Earth. SpaceX has hinted at an unanticipated need to create sea recovery systems for the Starship program in several recent job advertisements. SpaceX's CEO Musk, its executives, and the company itself have long maintained that Super Heavy boosters and Starship's upper stages would perform Return to Launch Site RTLS, landings. This has been the case since SpaceX first started bending metal for its steel Starship development program in late 2018. These previously mentioned plans may no longer be definite. Strangely, SpaceX's recent marine engineer and naval architect job postings never mentioned the company's plan to convert retired oil rigs into sizable floating Starship launch sites. But they have often disclosed plans to develop marine recovery assets for Starship. It goes without saying that carrying a complete oil rig hundreds of miles to and from port is hardly an efficient or cost-effective solution for rocket recovery. It weighs several thousand tons and is nothing compared to the football field-sized drone ships that recover Falcon rockets. Additionally, it would be quite illogical for SpaceX to hire a skilled naval architect without ever stating that they would be working on the largest floating launch pad in the world. That leaves us with three logical reasons. First, it's likely that SpaceX is only getting ready for the possibility of recovering debris, undamaged floating ships, or boosters after purposefully using them on early orbital Starship test flights. Second, SpaceX might have plans to deconstruct a few oil rigs into landing pads that can remain at sea indefinitely, rather than completely transforming them into launch pads. These platforms might then transmit boosters or landing spacecraft to smaller support ships, which will bring them back to solid ground. 
Thirdly, and maybe most likely, SpaceX may be investigating the advantages of deploying super heavy rockets on water. SpaceX has gradually improved and polished the recovery and recycling of orbital class rocket boosters through its Falcon rockets, 24 out of 103 of which took place on the ground. Those 24 boosters turned around, canceled out their significant velocities, and propelled themselves a few hundred kilometers back to the Florida or Californian coast, where they finally touched down on simple concrete pads, as opposed to coasting 500 to 1,000 kilometers, 300 to 600 miles, downrange after stage separation and landing on a drone ship at sea. It should come as no surprise that completely reversing the velocity back towards the launch site after canceling out about 1.5 kilometers per second of downrange velocity, equal to Mach 4.5, is an expensive maneuver that uses a lot of fuel. For instance, it is believed that 20 tons, 40,000 pounds of propellant are needed for the nominal 25-second re-entry burn carried out by practically all Falcon rockets. All Falcon boosters use a standard 35-second single-engine landing burn that uses around 10 tons, about 22,000 kilograms, of propellant on average. Normally, a drone ship booster landing only requires that much. A 40-second boost-back burn with three Merlin 1D engines is also required for RTLS landings, adding another 25 to 35 tons, 55,000 to 80,000 pounds, of propellant expenditure. In other words, a propellant drone ship landing often costs at least twice as much as an RTLS landing. A drone ship landing could reduce the payload of the Falcon 9 to low Earth orbit by about 5 tons based on the general rocketry rule of thumb. The rule states that every 7 kilograms of booster mass reduces payload to orbit by 1 kilogram, and that each reusable Falcon booster requires about 3 tons of recovery-specific hardware mostly legs and grid fins. It might only weigh 13 tons with the additional propellant required for an RTLS landing down by another 4 to 5 tons. A Falcon 9 with drone ship boosters recoveries has never launched more than 16 tons to LEO, which is probably not a coincidence. Falcon 9 can launch roughly 12 tons with an RTLS landing and 16 tons with a drone ship landing, according to SpaceX. All of this is to indicate that landing reusable boosters at sea will always be more effective. SpaceX has always maintained that Starship's super heavy rockets will avoid maritime recovery since it is intrinsically difficult, unsafe, expensive, and time consuming to land and recover such massive rocket boosters at sea. This makes frequent reuse, on the scale of many times per day or week, really hard and invariably raises the cost of recovery. However, there is always a chance that certain launch profiles may be significantly simplified and wind up being cheaper, as long as at-sea recovery costs less than a few million dollars. It's possible that a water landing might offer Starship the performance required to complete the same mission in a single launch, reducing the overall cost of launch services. The number of launches SpaceX needs to fill up a Starship moon lander would have to be reduced by a third if a sea landing could increase the payload of the spaceship to LEO by a third or more. Recovery of boosters at sea is made more conceivable by the fact that SpaceX and NASA have been scheduling Starship tanker missions 12 days apart. With full reuse and RTLS booster recovery, the Starship launch vehicle CEO Elon Musk has outlined theoretically may be capable of launching somewhere between 150 and 200 tons into low Earth orbit. With so much performance at hand, an RTLS booster landing reducing payload to orbit by a third, a half, or even more may not be as significant as it is with Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. In the end, only 100 tons to LEO might be more than sufficient to meet any practical short-term performance demands. It's difficult to picture SpaceX voluntarily giving up at-sea recovery out of pure principle until Starships and Super Heavy rockets are reusable enough to routinely launch multiple times per week, let alone per day. Additionally, the cost of launching must have been reduced to single-digit millions of dollars. So what do you think about SpaceX's marine recovery? Is it as beneficial as they claim? 
let us know in the comments. If you liked our video, please don't forget to give it a like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more fantastic content. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of our latest updates. Thanks for watching.